Hey everybody, I'm John Storm with Armored Combat Worldwide and the Rock City Rogue Knights and today we're going to show you how to take care of your armor. Stay tuned. All right, I'm back. So, this right here is my clap visor bassinet. It has had some damage. Now, one of the things that these things always have an issue with is corrosion, rust. So that's kind of one of the big deals. That's what we're going to talk about today. Simple cleaning method. I get the question a lot. So today in armor maintenance, we're going to talk about just simple rust removal. All right, everybody always asks that, what type of sandpaper should I use? What type of, uh, is there any particular type of oil? What type of wax? You know, all that stuff. And, and truth is, you know what? It's pretty simple and straightforward. So whenever you're dealing with rust and the likes, you always want to use the least abrasive method, method possible. Green scratch pad. All right. Now you can go down to your local hardware store and you can pick up one a spray bottle and two a gallon of WD-40. You could use the spray bottle but the gallon works better than the aerosol can. Refills. It's just cheaper. All right. Now after the last practice that we had the other week I went ahead and allowed this to sit without taking care of it. So that way a little rust would build up so I could do this video. All right. So it's 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 pretty simple. If you look right here you can see we got a little bit of rust forming right there. Too easy. All right. A little spritz. And a mild amount of elbow grease. You can see right there it's coming right off. It's pretty easy to see. This doesn't take very long. A lot of people think you're going to spend hours and hours and hours messing with your armor. Well, that's only true if you let it go for too long. All right, now if you notice, I'm not using sandpaper, and the sandpaper removes too much metallic material, so what you end up doing is thinning out your helmet every time, you know, and where you once had a three mil thick, like an eighth inch thick steel for your helmet, now next thing you know, you've got like this little paper thin, you, you don't want to take a hit to the head with that. Another thing you might want here is a uh, paper towel. You can use a, a rag or something like that if that's what you like to use. That's that's perfectly fine. Probably more environmentally friendly. Uh, there you go. That rust is pretty much gone. There's almost nothing left of it. All right, we've got a little bit here that's a little mild pitting. All right, I'm going to see if I can't give it another squirt real quick. Yeah, she's coming out. So you can see this really doesn't take a lot of effort. You know, so a lot of times it's recommended that you give your helmet, give your gear a once over before you get into it, before you begin a fight. And again, after the practice or the tournament is over, you might want to go ahead and just do a little uh, preventive maintenance on your, on your gear. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier if you handle it right there. Now, if you haven't fought in a while, like sometimes a lot of places during the winter time, we don't really do much fighting. Uh, not much or still a little but that's a long time to go without checking your your gear so during that time you're going to want to go ahead and just pull it all out give it a quick spritz now the chain mail right here on the aventail the aventail is this area right here this uh just adds a little extra protection there's multiple layers protecting your neck and everything this is one of them all right so the chain mail right here is a little bit trickier to get to all right, you end up, you're gonna to wanna to use a wire brush if you got it, but I forgot my wire brush in my workshop because I'm a stupid, stupid man sometimes. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a little green scratch pad to go ahead and get this up. So give me a minute. All right, so you can see that worked just fine. Uh, I didn't have a lot of rust in here, so it's pretty easy to get it cleaned up. Uh, but if you do have a bit of buildup, that green, or not, sorry, not the green scratch pad, but the, uh, the, the brass wire brush, you're able to just lightly brush all that stuff off, 
and give it a nice wipe down with some oil. Uh, the next thing, if you notice that the Aventail is wired in, is sewn into this leather strap right here. All right, another piece of leather you have is the strap that we use to keep our clap visor bassinets or any type of visor closed. And there's one more piece. This is called the Simon strap, all right? This goes to the back of the helmet and straps it. Your buddy has to give you a hand with this, but it straps it to the, uh, your cuirass or your brigandine or whatever type of torso protection you're wearing. The whole point is to make sure that the helmet stays affixed to your, to your body. Like uh, we have a, a chin strap inside that helps keep it down and keeps the faceplate far away from your face so that way it doesn't bash you and break your nose or anything like that. But in addition to that, just in case that slips your chin, we don't want somebody to accidentally be able to pull your helmet off, so there's a Simon strap. So the leather bits are just as important as the steel, all right? And it's real easy to take care of that, all right? We're gonna go ahead and get another paper towel here. And then, our trusty mink oil, all right? Get a little dab on that. You can use a brush and you can brush it in if you'd like, uh, but I'm just gonna use this because I didn't bother grabbing my brush either. All right, so you can see right here, it goes on real easy. And that's it. We do both sides. Just to keep the leather supple. Doesn't take a large coating. Little goes a long way, all right? Now, if you wanna throw a little mink oil on the helmet as well, on the steel, to give it a little extra layer, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. Uh, now, you don't necessarily have to use WD-40. You can use, uh, I've used olive oil, you know, uh, you can use vegetable oil, you can use a lot of stuff. Uh, as long as it's not corrosive to the steel, you can, you know, I would just basically, I would, I would stick with either like an olive oil, a WD-40, or something of that nature. You know, something that's pretty easy to get your hands on, super cheap, and uh, gets the job done. Uh, if you can get some Renaissance wax, that's also a great product to add onto your, onto your steel bits after you're done. That's, that's a really good protective one. I do have Renaissance wax, and right now it's sitting with my brass wire brush in my workshop. <laughs> so... Uh, I don't get points for preparedness today. Even if you go ahead and you purchase a stainless steel kit, this is still something you're going to want to do, is a little basic corrosion preventative. Because, uh, to be perfectly honest, even with stainless steel, stainless steel still gets a little rusty from time to time. Uh, and it's just good sense to go ahead and take care of your stuff. All right? I hope you enjoyed this. Next week, you're gonna wanna stay tuned because next week we're gonna show you some highlights from this week's fight. This Saturday, the Rock City Rogue Knights are fighting the New York City Gladiators in Middleport, New York. We will uh, be recording, of course, and I'm gonna give you a highlights of that next week, some, some nice action, all right? Hope you guys enjoy. I look forward to seeing you again. Once again, I'm John Storm for Armored Combat Worldwide and the Rock City Rogue Knights, and we look forward to seeing you in the list. So, oh, you're uh, still here. Hey, do me a favor, hit like and subscribe for me, all right? Talk to you later.